Morpheus, should I take the blue pill or the red pill? Only you can decide, Neo. One will help your food stay fresh for years. The other will let you waste away in a dystopian underworld. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit of a science fiction geek, as you'll, say, you'll see going forward. I'm calling this segment Spill the Beans, because we will present info you may or may not hear from other sources for various reasons. Today we're going to talk a little about the blue pill and the red pill. There's a blue bad pill, and there's a red good pill. Um, these are oxygen indicators, and we're going to discuss the ins and outs of oxygen absorbers. We get questions every day regarding oxygen absorbers. The next couple of videos we do are going to be about the most frequently asked questions about mylar bags and oxygen absorbers. I hope you'll stay with me as I also let you in on a piece of information that no other vendor will tell you and I haven't heard from any other prepper. First, what is an oxygen absorber? These packets are filled with an iron powder. The packet itself is a no BPA, FBA approved material for contact with food. It removes oxygen through a chemical reaction. When the packet and the powder inside are exposed to oxygen, it reacts by oxidizing, or rusting. Because the reaction itself uses oxygen, like fuel for a fire, when placed in a sealed container, it br brings the oxygen level of the container down, way down. A properly sized oxygen absorber will bring the O2 level down to about 0.1%, compared to about 2% for vacuum sealing and 5% for nitrogen flushing, which was the most common way folks did this 20 years ago. Just to let you know, this is what the inside of an oxygen absorber looks like. It's just a nice uh, black powder, charcoal colored powder. Um, I have seen some others that are a little gray-ish, but again, it really needs to be definitely look like a powder and not, not chunky. So, what are the other common questions I get? The main one is regarding the oxygen indicator tablet and why some of our oxygen absorbers don't have it. I remember very early on, one of my customers suggested I was going to give them oxygen absorbers by selling them um, absorbers without indicators. Of course, box botulism can only occur in an oxygen-free environment, so I'm not sure how that worked. Still, it made me wonder why some absorbers, for example, those, um, had indicators and some didn't. So I spent a good month researching it and talking to my manufacturers. The simple answer is that they don't provide you the information you think they do. They exist really mainly as a gimmick and more for the customer's peace of mind than an ac accurate prediction of the health of your oxygen absorbers. This is the piece of information no one else is going to tell you. Oxygen indicators do not tell you whether your oxygen absorbers are good. They only tell you that the oxygen level in the package is below 1%. Take a moment to mull that over. You know, some might ask, what is the difference? Well, I'll give you a couple of examples. And beware, these are dramatized. I don't actually think they occur. I'm exaggerating to make a point. So, imagine some guy, he buys some oxygen absorbers wholesale, and he decides he wants to resell them on eBay. So here's what he does. So he buys this, and just so you know, people do do this, um, but I'm not going to really comment on that. So he's going to take 10 of these out, and he's going to put them in another little plastic bag, and then he's going to seal that plastic bag, and he's going to sell 10 packs instead of the 50 pack that they came in. So he opens this package, and then his phone rings. And then he decides to take his dog for a walk. And then he goes to the mall with his wife. When he gets back to the house, he goes, Oh, crap, I left all these absorbers out. Well, he doesn't want to lose money, so what does he do? He goes and he opens a fresh pack of oxygen absorbers. And he proceeds to put, you know, say, one good absorber in the pack and then nine that have been sitting out all day. And then he puts the little oxygen indicator pill in. Well, and guess what? It goes to pink. The one good absorber in that package still has plenty of power to suck the O2 out of the plastic bag. 
as I mentioned, all the pill does is tell you whether there's no uh, oxygen in the package and not whether the absorbers are good or bad. So, how about this? You have a, you know, these are built in a, uh, a shop or a factory. So you have a machine operator packing and sealing these absorbers. Um, two hours after a batch is done, you know, say the guy notices that, you know, the bag isn't sealed all the way. Uh, so what does he do? Well, he just reseals the absorbers. Uh, they're still more than 50 percent, you know, they're more than 50 percent spent in those two hours hanging out, but the indicator will still turn pink because as long as the absorbers have any capacity, they're still going to work. The same thing goes. Imagine a prepper bought a case of oxygen absorbers, he used half the case, and then the rest of the absorbers sat on a shelf for five years. Very slowly, over time, uh, the pla these plastic bags, all plastic bags, even though these are good uh, oxygen resistant plastic bags, oxygen will slowly leach into any bag um, that's made out of a plastic barrier film. Um, this is why absorbers generally have about a 12 to 18 month shelf life. So the prepper looks at his absorber and says, hey, cool, uh, my indicator pill is still pink, so they must be good. I think I'm going to resell these to a friend, or maybe I'll just give them to someone. What he doesn't realize is that the absorbers are 90% used up just by sitting on his shelf. That's a terrible situation. Um, he thinks they're still good because the, the indicator is still good when they're really not. So please, please, please do not rely on an oxygen indicator to tell you if your absorbers are good or not. And don't buy from one vendor or another because some of their absorbers don't have indicators. You know, it's interesting to think about. Um, I'm guessing that more people have probably used bad absorbers with an indicator than without. Because the ones using absorbers without an indicator are paying more attention to whether or not their absorbers are working instead of relying on the indicator pill. So, how can someone tell if their absorbers are good or not? That's another question we get. So we recommend one of two ways. First, when you remove an oxygen absorber from the packet, pinch it. You know, just pinch it. If it feels soft and powdery inside, it is almost certainly good. Because, over time, as the iron rusts, it will become crunchy and it will actually form into a single solid wafer as the individual particles rust together. As an example, here is my fresh oxygen absorber powder that I just took out of the packet, and here's one that's used up. See how it has actually melted or rusted into a single solid crunchy piece. So when this is in the packet, you can pinch it and you know immediately, oh heck, this is a bad absorber. So don't use them if they're hard and crunchy inside and they're good if they're soft and powdery. Um, the second way, and this works better if you're sealing up a lot of bags, and I've left this uh, packet out here for about 15 minutes so far, um, is that absorbers will begin to get warm as you work with them. You know, this is a byproduct of the chemical reaction. As an FYI, if you leave absorbers in the original packaging, and luckily it didn't happen here, while you're working with them, you can often get condensation on the inside of the bag. To prevent this, here's what you want to do. You're going to take out, you know, say, five absorbers. I got five bags to seal. You're going to set them aside. Then you're going to take the rest of these absorbers, and you're going to put them into a small mason jar with the little vacuum lids to keep the rest of them fresh. Um, storing excess absorbers is probably our third most common question. So, again, you either want to reseal them, you can just reheat seal this bag if you have an appropriate heat sealer, or put them into a mason jar to keep them fresh. Um, I'm going to leave it at that for today. If anyone has any other questions about Mylar bags or oxygen absorbers, uh, please email me at admin at discountmylarbags.com reference you two in the title of the email and once I get two or three questions I'll do a video with questions and answers. Next week on Spill the Beans we're going to talk about Mylar bags and frequently asked questions about them. Again I'll show you some things that certain competitors of ours would not like you to see. I hope you all have a great week. Have fun. Bye.